Today, we're gonna be replacing this old metal zipper in this well-loved leather jacket with a brand spanking new one. I've been looking forward to doing this video because we're gonna kill two birds with one stone. First, obviously looking at replacing this older zipper in this heavier leather coat, but also what do you do when you don't have the right size zipper? This zipper is too long for this jacket. So we're also gonna talk about how to shorten a zipper and put new stops on to accommodate the project you're working on. So let's start by ripping out this zipper. There is no trick. There is no shortcut. It is just what it looks like. Pick an end and start ripping. So I am using my standard seam ripper, nothing unusual, same way I would always take out a zipper or rip a seam. Uh, the one thing that I am doing is starting on the inside. Um, when I have to use quite a bit of force to get in there and get started, I do wanna go on the inside uh, to avoid any potential damage on the outside. Most of these zippers are gonna be sewn top stitched on the outside and uh, stitched on the, under stitched on the inside. So likely we could be cutting anywhere from two to three or four seams. The other thing that you can see already, you see how I'm pulling that? Okay, this is an important one. PSA right here. Thread goes bad, okay? So let me repeat that. Thread goes bad, it goes stale. It gets past its prime and doesn't hold garments anymore. So that beautiful vintage dress you have, that awesome well-loved leather jacket, they're great, they can be repaired but the age of the thread is one of its biggest vulnerabilities, okay? So one of the important things about replacing this zipper is going to be also using new thread that has the elasticity, that has the strength that this older thread doesn't have anymore. So if you find that you're able to tear this apart just like this without seam ripping, just know this thread and all the seams in the jacket may need to be reinforced. That's okay. Just Keep it in mind. You can see. We're getting down to the bottom where the retainer for the zipper is. And again, because it's leather, we're just gonna have to mm, handle it a little bit. That's okay. Just trying to cut those individual stitches. And now I'm gonna keep on seam ripping up the outside. So we've got the inside removed, and now we're gonna do the outside. And then we'll jump to the other side. I like to do my seam ripping in this case all at once. So we're gonna take the entire zipper out so that we can start fresh and get our new one seated in both sides together so that we can test the teeth and make sure that everything lines up. Because when you're sewing leather, You've only got one shot. Once the holes are punched, they're punched. So even though you can rip those seams, you can't unperforate the leather from the holes that the, the needle has made. And we're gonna be using a uh, pretty heavy needle. In this case, I'm probably gonna go with a size 14. Up around the top here, we just wanna be delicate and make sure that we don't cause any unnecessary damage. One of the trickier parts about working with older or vintage clothing is just being careful about the garment itself. Treat it with respect and try to keep it as clean and well intact as possible. I am uh, rubbing along this edge to peel out the little scraps of thread from me seam ripping. I really like to keep my seams clean, especially with zippers, uh, because it looks nice later, saved me a little bit of work then, and keeps any of these little threads from getting caught in the new teeth when we're trying to install that zipper. Awesome. 
One side done, one side to go. I'm almost done seam ripping, but here's one important sidebar. I, as I'm seam ripping, am taking notes on how this is constructed because of course we're reversing everything, but we're going to be going in the forward direction when we're putting the zipper back on. So see this here? These are the seam, this is the seam that I'm cutting. And I see that that corresponds over here to this stitching. And as I flip this out, I'm seeing that the zipper tape was sewn this way first. You can just barely see these stitches. Yeah, there you go. You can see that the zipper was sewn this way first and then flipped and then top stitched. Very important info for us because we're gonna try to do that exact same maneuver now putting in the new zipper. Alrighty, these little babies have served us well and they have one last job to do they are gonna give us the measurement. So let's take one side and measure it and see how long this zipper is. Full length from bottom retainer to the top is about 23 and a half. We're also gonna note this little guy right here. That's the zipper stop. This part will be sewn into the jacket itself and this is where the zipper slide is actually gonna be stopped. That's at 22 and a half. So 23 and a half for the full zip and we'll get back to the stops later. So let's move on to our new zipper. Hello, beautiful, shiny, new gunmetal colored zipper. These are one of my favorite zippers, the black, black oxidized. So 23 and a half was the full length of our other zipper. So we're gonna measure that out, starting from the bottom. The bottom is, this piece down here is called the retainer. And that's where the uh, pieces fit together to begin lacing the teeth together. So let's start at our retainer and measure up to 23 and a half. And we're gonna make a chalk mark right up there. Awesome. All righty. Now, just to make sure that the zipper didn't get stretched out while we were seam ripping or whatever else, we're now gonna hold this up and make sure that 23 and a half does seem appropriate. So this is sort of a double check for us. Make sure that that is really the right length because once we cut it, we can't go back. So let's see, and that does look pretty good. But for me personally, I think I'm gonna add an extra half an inch just to give myself a little wiggle room, okay? Just a little extra flexibility because now we are gonna cut that bad boy. So let's get some heavier scissors to do that cutting. Okay. These are a heavier steel. They got a lot of weight to them. What I like to do is unzip to that point two important reasons. One, if you cut that off and the zipper pull is up here, well, you're gonna be restringing that pull. And two, I like to cut each side individually, so make sure that you mark on either side of the zipper tape because I'm gonna cut in between the teeth. I really don't wanna cut at the teeth. There we go. And then before I get into any trouble with unraveling, I am immediately gonna burn these. Just a little bit. To singe that off, great. Now we're gonna be pulling some of these teeth to get down to the true starting point where the stop is gonna go. So don't worry too much about that uneven edge. We're good, we're just trying to keep that from unraveling while we're working. Next up, let's get this zipper placed. There is so much gear. Spoiler, I should have said this at the beginning. There's a lot of gear for this one. You can do it, but there are a lot of parts. Leather, let's talk about leather. Leather is a different material, obviously, than fabric, but in our case, for this purpose, its biggest difference is the perforations made by any needle that goes through it, which means when we would normally pin a zipper in place, we're gonna have to use 
another alternative. In this case, I really like these cute craft pins and we're gonna try to use these to start pinning this zipper in place. I'm also ready to separate the zipper and do each side on its own. It doesn't matter which side you start with. Um, so I'm gonna start with the non-zipper pull side and we'll go from there. So I'm sliding that in. Boy, that looks nice. And then just clamping these little guys on just like this. And maybe I want to leave a little more clearance, just a little bit so that that larger pull can slide right through. Gosh, this already looks beautiful. And as we get closer up to the top, we'll be able to figure out where those stops should go. Okay, we've gotten to the top here. We're ready now to decide where we're gonna put our zipper stop. This is a zipper stop. It's made out of metal and it's applied with pliers and it's going to be used to stop the slider from going off the zipper track. And we have to decide where we're going to apply that. So we're going to actually cut the teeth down to the point where we would like to clamp this on. Let's see where we think that will be. I am actually going to seam rip a teensy bit into the collar there so that I can get the tape in a little bit further. Good, okay. Yes, that's very helpful. All right, so it looks like I am going to make right there my final tooth and I'm gonna put the stop above that. So, I'm actually going to, you can pull these teeth off. Why don't I show you that as well? You can pull individual metal teeth off. This is not true for nylon coil. Ooh. But it is true for metal teeth because they are individually placed. There you go. See how you can just pull those? Can you see that little tooth in there? You can actually individually pull those off. In this case, I'd like to just go ahead and cut down to our chalk mark. But I'm leaving this zipper tape because that helps me sew it in to the collar later. One more little clip and boom, those are done. Again, let's burn. Just a really little bit. Awesome. Now, I'm gonna fold this back. This is going to just keep that zipper secure. I like keeping that zipper tape inside up at the collar there. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. And now, I'm gonna pull that one last tooth off the edge and replace it with this stop. Here we go. There we go, off you go just like pulling real teeth. I know that because an actual dentist told me that, just kidding. <laughs> you see that little nub we've got there now? The burning of the plastic actually helps a little bit to give my stop a nice place to sit. So you see you've got our stop there, right in the pliers, and now we're just gonna place that right there at the top and set it right in there and just kind of give it a little hug. And then I'm gonna push it on 
and position it in place where I want it to be and clamp it from both the front like that and the back. And sometimes if I'm feeling crazy, I'll even give it a little hit with the hammer. If it's a large metal one that I really, really want to get clamped good, but I feel like he's on there pretty good. Okay, we've got him clamped in with the stop applied. This is the collar and edge of the neckline here. Now, let's get the second side of the zipper shortened and stopped as well. Then we'll be ready to move on to the sewing. You know what I did before I sewed, right? I was a welder. Okay. Let's get another little zipper piece. Dude. I am just finishing up matching up the lengths by zipping the second side into the first side. So I did clamp the first side into the jacket to get it exactly right and figure out exactly how many teeth I wanted to pull out and all that. And now to do the other side, I've zipped them together and I'm just maneuvering this last stop. I think I'd like it to go down a teensy bit further. Let's do one more. I'm going to pull that bad boy off. There we go. I'm going to burn that one more time. I wanted to place that a little bit lower, so I'm actually going to do that again. There we go. These are a size 7 stop, by the way. There are many different sizes that you can, different sizes and different colors that you can buy zipper stops in. Typically gold, silver, antique brass, and matte black are the common ones. And they usually come in size, I think three, five, seven, eight, ten. 10. So tons of options. I'm gonna zip up one more time. And boop, right there at the top, okay. Almost there. <laughs> Come here. Okay, get away from me now, little buddy. And before I totally clamp it in, so that I don't have to pull it off again, because once they are clamped, they are essentially wasted because they can't be unbent and clamped back in. They just aren't as efficient. I'm gonna make sure I have them exactly lined up. Yes. And I'm just gonna push him down, eat a little bit more, and then. All right. Ready to sew. All right, let's get this clamped in. <laughs> As we're getting ready to place this zipper and we're gonna set one side off to the side. And then, even though the teeth will end up facing out in the end, you remember that when we were seam ripping out the original zipper, we found that the stitching actually held the zipper here, facing out, and then was top stitched in. So our first line of stitching to hold the zipper in place is actually going to be with the teeth facing away from each other. So that's our first step. Clamping this little baby in, matching up the seam allowances, and sewing, I can feel that we're gonna be sewing in the center of the zipper tape where that crease is, which will allow us to flip it back out 
and stitch on the top, just like it was. So let's finish that up. And to save time and trips to the machine, we are going to pin, I'm sorry, clamp both of the zipper sides in place while we're still over here at the table. We're here up at the collar and the seam allowance that we have been pinning or clamping the zipper tape to is sewn into the collar. So don't worry too much about this top first. Let's get the rest of the zipper sewn and do the individual top portion on each side last. We're putting in a size uh, 16 or 100, however you choose to read confusing needle sizing, <laughs> but it's heavier, mid-range to heavier. All right. One last thing. Oh, sorry, Bobby, don't film any of this. This is a Teflon foot and it's got a nice smooth bottom that's going to slide along our leather a little bit easier than the metal foot. Sometimes our regular metal foot can be just a teensy bit tacky, um, meaning sticking to the fabric a little bit too much. Oh my God, okay, who tightened this? I'm gonna have to talk to the girls, okay. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So our Teflon foot is going to help us just sort of skate along the edge a little bit better. Now, very important detail. As we sew the leather, the zipper is going to creep along and it's going to want to stretch and elongate. Our Teflon bottom foot is going to help with that a little, but this is the sticky situation people can get into with the zipper sides not lining up. So we're gonna try to stick to exactly where we clamp the zipper as closely as possible. We're gonna start by placing our stop exactly where we want it, and then making sure that that is exactly where we start, okay? So let's get that under the machine. I'm not gonna start all the way up at the top. I'm gonna start a little bit further down. This is the first internal stitch, so this is more to hold it in place, okay? We are using a 60 Tex weight thread and a 14 size needle. You could also use a 16 size needle, so a 90 or a 100. Getting into this heavier weight leather. Certainly not as heavy as they come, but decent, decent weight. And just check periodically to make sure we don't have any other material caught underneath and I'm just riding the teeth right along the edge, which is putting my stitch line in the middle of the zipper tape. We may end up switching to a smaller, thinner foot, a traditional zipper foot when we get to the top stitching, but we will play it by ear. Okay. Getting down to the bottom here. And this snap right here is preventing me from laying it out flat. But if you didn't have a snap there, it would be pretty easy to get into this little tight corner, actually. 
actually. Okay. As close as we can. This went well. So even as I take it out from under the machine, the previous fold from how it's held its position all these years is already flipping it back into position. Look at that. So now our job of top stitching straight through to hold that in place is gonna just be a cinch. This is gonna be great. Let's get the other side sewn to that top and then we'll talk about getting the lining attached as well and finish it up. As we're clamping the facing and lining, facing, lining, all interior, to the outside to prepare for our final top stitch, you can see how I've clamped this together, beginning at the top and moving down. We're trying to make sure that that previous stitching line is falling in a good place in relation to the teeth and that we are clamping both in because we're gonna be putting one single stitch straight from the top side all the way down through every layer all at once to hold this all in place. And if everything looks good, that will be the final stitch to hold it all in place. And we'll do that on both sides. So let's get this lined up under the machine and put that top stitch in. One of the things that we need to check just before we get sewing is the placement of our foot. We're getting really lucky here because as you can see, the needle is going to come down directly in the previous stitching path that we want to be sewing in and our foot is going to be guiding right along the edge of those teeth. That is perfect. So once we get past this section with the retainer, we're really gonna be in good shape. So let's try to start at the end. If your machine, your home machine is giving you trouble starting at the end, you can always start a little bit further up and come back and do the end later by turning the garment around. Let's see. Yeah, see how it's kind of fighting? You can start to see the teeth pulling up here. I'm gonna cut that off there and I'm gonna start a teensy bit further up past the retainer. Oh, let me pull my tail out. Let's try again, and a little back stitch. Okay, now, let's get, we wanna get our zipper pull out of the way as quickly as possible, but I have a seam hump coming up here, and I'd like to get past that little roadblock first. So let's go nice and slow. I've got my stitch length here at just about three, in between three and four, so longer than I would with a thinner fabric. All right, back to the zip. Let's get the zipper pull out of the way. We're gonna lift our presser foot and slide him back. There we go, okay. Now, we will be free and clear all the way to the top. One of the things I am gonna do as I'm stitching here is frequently lift the presser foot to keep any leather from getting pushed up against the front of the presser foot. Because again, 
if you sew this in one single line or you try to, it's going to start piling up and getting off. So I am gently using my seam ripper, my fingers, and my presser foot to keep everyone in line. Keep that feed even and smooth. Hands in front and in back, helping to guide it. There we go. Oop, I'm getting a little closer in there. I'm also periodically checking to make sure that my underside, in this case, the leather facing that connects to the lining, is still where it's supposed to be as well. And I can feel that with my hand, but that's hard for, harder for you to see. I'll also periodically try to pull out old stitching if I can see it as I'm going. Just, just to keep it clean, just to keep it looking nice, really. It's just totally an aesthetic thing. Keep on keeping on. I am also listening and I can hear when the needle is going all the way through this top leather and the bottom leather. It has a deeper thudding noise and getting sensitive to those different sounds that your machine makes and which ones are good and which ones are bad is really important, especially if you think you want to be working with more leather. But sewing in general, all of those sounds and being cognizant of them, just like in nature is gonna really help you be aware of your sewing surroundings. All right, we're almost there. We're gonna go all the way up to the collar and then backstitch. Ooh, wow. Oh, look at that. Hello, beautiful. I'm just giving this a very gentle steam to get any kind of little bit of wave out. And then we're gonna test it. Okay. Before we move to the other side, let's make sure that the spacing with teeth to jacket is good. And the way we'll test that is by running the zipper up. It's nice. Ooh, that's good. Okay, we are ready to jump to the other side. All right, moment of truth. Let's zip this baby up and see how she looks. Beautiful. Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. And just for good measure, whew, give it a couple of runs. Beautiful, beautiful. Love it. All right. What do I want to say now? For more videos on how to sew, other zippers, more leather, and anything else sewing related, check out this playlist up here. And like, subscribe. Keep on sewing with us. We'll see you next time.